hey, if you own a gun in California, you should have an attorney that specializes in California gun laws on your speed dial. Because if you ever have legal matters that involve firearms, you need California firearm lawyer John Dillon. If you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe just need to know that your guns are California compliant, our trusted firearms attorney is John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Put his number on your phone right now, 760-642-7150. That's John Dillon, California firearms lawyer, 760-642-7150. All right, so our our first guest is Michael Duda from Elite CCW Firearms Training out of Orange County. Michael, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Awesome. You're, and my son, Bailey, uh, who's my business partner, is also on the phone with us. Oh, good. Hey, Bailey. How you doing, bud? Doing good. How are you guys? Kicking. So why don't we start? Why don't you guys talk a little bit about who you are, what you do, a little bit about the history of uh, Elite CCW Firearms Training? All right. That sounds good. Um, first of all, uh, we're a little uh, father and son CCW and firearms training business located in Fountain Valley. California, of course, and uh, we have a 4,000-foot training facility. We have our own indoor shooting range, simulator, classroom. Uh, We do live scans here. We're kind of a one-stop shop for the the CCW uh, world, and uh, we're authorized training providers for L.A., Orange, and San Diego counties. Um, We started, uh, I retired from the Orange County Sheriff's Department uh, due to a total knee replacement in uh, March of 2020, and uh, I started this business May of 2020, and who knew the right place, right time, and uh, lo and behold, every firearm was sold off of every shelf in California, and um, people wanted training, and people wanted to get their CCW, so we we started a business exactly at the right time, and Congratulations. We, we started out... Thank you. We started out in a real small little office and I was, you know, hey, I just retired, didn't know anything about business. And uh, here it is like a a 16 foot by 11 foot office, had a conference table and a desk and a big TV. And we outgrew that in a matter of three months. And then we went to a a bigger office that was on the first floor of the same building. And um, probably eight months later, we outgrew that one. And then, um, you know, now three years later, we're in this beautiful facility that we have. And it's kind of cool. It's our, our pride and, and joy. And we we truly can do everything right here. It's pretty neat. How cool is that? So what did you what did you do for the sheriff's department? Um, I was a sworn officer. I started out in the jails, went to patrol, worked special enforcement, promoted to sergeant, went back to the jails. Um, and then I was a patrol supervisor. And then from January 2017 to I retired, I was assigned to the CCW unit. So I was the supervisor of the CCW unit. And you guys, what a great unit. As far as, I mean, Orange County, I, I got to say, I'm, I'm thinking through here. I Honestly, I, I really do think that more so than any other county, um, Orange County was a huge leader when it comes to issuing CCWs, how to operate efficiently. I mean, I know there's a bunch of littler counties that, you know, you just kind of say, hey, I want a CCW, and they would just, you know, hand it to you right then and there. You know, it wasn't a big deal. But medium, large counties, Orange County was was the first and the best um, and really a huge leader uh, over Riverside, over San Bernardino, certainly over San Diego, over L.A., uh, definitely over San Francisco. I mean, you guys were were kind of set the model. How, it, talk a little bit about that. I don't know. Am I, am I wrong? Am I overstating? No, uh, absolutely. First and foremost, we've been blessed with two sheriffs, Hutchins, and you know she passed and God rest her soul. And she's a true leader of a, a woman, and I'll follow her when I'm up in heaven. We'll be uh, guardian angels, and she'll be the leader, and I follow her again. But uh, Don Barnes, our current sheriff, phenomenal man, uh, excellent leader. They both supported the program. They gave us staffing um, to accomplish the mission of getting these things out there. 
I think when I started uh, at the unit, it was like about 7,500 CCW licenses were there. And when I left, there was over 15,000. Wow. Um, Solano County puts on a CCW conference for law enforcement. Yep. And I was a guest speaker there because we were the largest unit in California and told everyone how I ran the program, answered questions. Uh, it, it, we truly were the cutting edge of of processing efficiently. And, um, you know, right now, we're, I think Orange County's up over 19,000 licensees. Congratulations. Uh, That's awesome. Some special people up there. Melissa Soto's been up there. She's the head civilian, and uh, she's been up there. She's the driving force right now. She, she taught me everything up there. And um, me being a gun enthusiast, I didn't say gun nut, but... Um, we uh, we were a great team, and we we refined the process, and so it's been great. And what what by the way, is phenomenal. What year were you at uh, the Solana County? Uh, uh, I think that was conference. 2018. 2018 was the first one that they did. Nice. And what do you what do you? I, I got to tell you, when we were talking to San Diego, in San Diego, we finally got them to change and start issuing. Um, I was basically, I just like, Hey, go ask Orange County what they're doing and do that. You know, like w- rather than sit here and try to reinvent the wheel, they they're nailing it. So just go talk to them. And, and for the most part they did, but what do you guys, uh, what, what was, what was like, Nate, what's something, uh, successful you guys did something you guys implemented and you were like, yeah, that really, that made the process smooth. So what really helped us is, um, when we rolled out the, uh, Permidium software, the online yeah. application process. Uh, we no longer had to carry around files and boxes. I used to, you know, have boxes in my office stacked with just application after application. Well, now they're all on a laptop. So that really helped with the efficiency. Um, but it's just the effort of that whole crew up there. We had what was called extra help staffing when I was there. Um, that's people who retired, sergeants, investigators, couple of deputies, and they were top notch. And so hand picked, they worked uh, like half, I think they could work up to 960 hours a year. And they were just, you know, the cream of the crop. So it made the, the whole process so easy. Um, they're willing to work, the knowledge they had, it, it just made it so simple. That's awesome! Congratulations, it's very cool. Now you were an officer. You were a, a de- sorry, a deputy. I don't know. You get you guys, you guys <laughs> yeah. officers or deputies, or is, is it offensive deputy, to call yeah. a? Did, okay, you, you were a deputy for for your career, um, which is awesome. Thank you so much. But that doesn't. Well, my question: a sergeant. <laughs> excellent. You're a sergeant. Um, there you go. You work for the sheriff's department. <laughs> you were a law yeah. enforcement officer. Um, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a gun enthusiast. Um, a lot, I think a lot of people think that law enforcement are all into guns and I don't, it's not really the case. Um, it, what, what got you into firearms and, and, and why? Well, it, I, I had a passion ever since I was a kid. My dad, uh, the first pistol I ever shot was his Colt Python. And after shooting that thing, I was hooked for life. Um, but I was in the army for 12 years, um, and I shot pistol competition, IPSC back in the day. And then at the sheriff's department, the, the training we go through, um, but you're absolutely correct. Not every cop is a gun enthusiast and there's a big difference. And some of them are phenomenal at solving crimes, but they're not the, you know, they, they won't talk to you about every model and shooting the fundamentals. They're, they're not experts there. But um, I happen to be, uh, uh, I guess, the proper way to say is a gun enthusiast, not a gun nut. But yeah. I truly uh, love shooting, taught my son to shoot at an early age. He's a high-level competitor now. Um, it, it's just, you know, I couldn't be more proud of a father to have a business partner that's my son and him be so successful at what he does. That's awesome. Hey, isn't Barnes a competitive shooter? Barnes is a, a a gun enthusiast. He shoots. Um, I, I'm I'm certain he's shot competitions. He he's not your average shooter. He, he if you look at his duty rig, you'll you'll immediately 
see his gun. It's got a magwell, everything. He is not your average shooter <laughs> for sure. <laughs> not your yeah, it's definitely not your average uh, uh, sheriff. You're not your average gun owning sheriff. I mean, uh, yeah, you don't see a lot of sheriffs walking around with with uh, you know with uh, hot rod rigs and and magwells on their uh, duty weapon. <laughs> exactly. Good like, for him. He's a phenomenal sheriff. He supported our unit the entire time I was up there, and I, I want to say the the approval rating for a CCW permit in Orange County is like 99 point something percent. Yeah. You guys, I know I was at a meeting years ago. Um, you were probably there. Uh, you were probably, uh, heading up the, the meeting. It was all the instructors were invited to come and there was, you know, some information and, and that sort of thing. And, uh, I, I understand that you guys actually, uh, issued, you issued a permit in like a day, like the guy showed up, he'd already taken the class he had all the paperwork. He had everything ready to go. And uh, if I remember, maybe I'm not remembering this correctly, but uh, he basically showed up at like 9 a.m. and and uh, whoever he was working with said, "Well, you know, do you got time?" And they went and worked on the file and issued it like the same day. Is that right? Am I making that up? So what what did ended up happening with the online program? If someone was smart enough, where they got their training done, their live scan done, got all their uh, documents that are needed for the, the application. So if everything was completed, um, my interviewers would, the investigators would come to me and say, hey, Sarge, I got a completed packet right here. Well, why, why make this guy come back and have paper and go walk through the lobby again? Let me just review it right now. It's about a 10, 15 minute review, go through everything, and I would approve it on the spot. There you so go. Yes, we were able to do that. Hey, Orange County Gun Owners is dedicated to preserving and restoring gun, uh, Orange County self-defense rights. If you live in Orange County and want to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, you just need to join. So join OCGunOwners.com slash join. Orange County Gun Owners is the organization to help get more pro-Second Amendment officials elected. So become a member today. OCGunOwners.com slash join. So we're talking to Michael and Bailey Duda from Elite CCW Firearms Training up in Orange County. Fantastic place. So talk about, you said that one of the things, it was kind of perfect timing because you guys started your shop and then uh, uh, COVID happened. So talk a little bit about that. What was what was that like for a firearms trainer when, when COVID kicked in? It, it was tough. You had a lot of people who were still very reserved to come to a, a group class. Um, luckily, uh, the group of people that seem to uh, want to be in the gun, you know, they're supportive of the, the gun industry. They are people who, um, they came in, there's, uh, you know, we took everybody's temperature. Uh, we There were masks always available, and we never had any issues with anybody, mask sickness or anything like that. So it worked out okay. And um, believe it or not, it just every week it got busier and busier. And it's um, I think a lot of people were afraid of the unknown. What's going to happen here? And there were a lot of there was a lot of noobs, a lot of new people. Absolutely. And um, what I would tell everyone is, uh, believe it or not, there were a lot of females who were um, interested in getting their CCW permits. And still to this day, it really is. You know, we do these shooting socials every month, especially down here in San Diego. And uh, between, you know, usually about a dozen people. And it's just an opportunity for activists to meet with new folks. And it's not really a class. I tell people it's not a class. It's not a one-on-one class. It's like an intro to. And the idea is we just kind of give them a first-time shooting experience and then, you know, try to get them to a, you know, a professional, you know, half-day or full-day class, whatever they can do. Um it's amazing. The I, I so we used to do one month. First, we we would have special uh, shooting socials that are just for women, and then we'd have general classes, you know. And then we'd, we we those were so successful that every other month was just for women. Now I can't yeah. even tell which ones are just for women and which one aren't because I, I, three quarters at least of the people coming through the shooting socials are women, and we're not targeting women. We're not you know marketing to women. Um, it, it, I get it, it. We're going to look back on uh, these last few years and it is going to be, uh, you know, I think we're headed towards, you know, 50, 50 
men, women, when it comes to uh, uh, gun ownership. I think, and I think it's great. Absolutely. And I just hope your audience realizes what efforts you guys are putting forth to uh, educate people, new gun owners, even, you know, you know, as well as I know that sometimes people who have owned guns for a long time, they don't have the fundamentals down pat. It may be a good shot, but they got to still know the safeties of handling it and, you know, laws of self-defense, castle doctrine, when you can use deadly force. All these things are so important. So let me ask you, okay, somebody gets a CCW. I guess I don't care if they're a new gun owner or they've been a gun owner for 30 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. They get a CCW. You got to renew every two years. What would you say is the minimum they need to train um, just to be a responsible CCW holder? You know what I mean? You know, and, and that's very subjective. As a business owner, I'm going to tell you, hey, they should be training every two weeks. But <laughs> obviously, <laughs> that would be great for me. But um, I, I would tell you this, and, and everyone should know that anything firearm related, knowing the laws or even the fundamentals of shooting is so perishable. Yeah. And that just means that you go, you know, you go shooting once a week just to the range and shoot a box of ammo. You skip a month and go back. It's like, wow, what's wrong with my gun? The sights must be off. <laughs> no, your fundamentals are off. And, and I would say somebody should be training without a doubt at least once a month. I mean, keep those skills fresh. And, and that goes as far as like we give a handout. That's basically our whole curriculum. And read through that and, and keep those skills and knowledge because the last thing we want ever to happen is If somebody was in that unfortunate situation and they have to use deadly force, they don't want to hesitate because if you hesitate, that gun can be taken away from you. So we want them to be, you know, uh, up on the knowledge and the skills. So I I, I would say at least once a month. Once a month. I I would, I, uh, I broke down, you know, we, we give these, how to get your CCW seminars and I kept encouraging people, Hey, you got to get training, got to get training, got to get training. And I noticed that, and I'm curious what your feedback is on this. Um, I think that, um, I think that maybe too many people, when I, when you say, Hey, you need to get training, you know, Hey, you need to take a class or whatever, but like 90% of them think all we're talking about is marksmanship. And so I was trying to think of a way to, uh, you know, encourage people to broaden the amount of training that they take or the types of training. So I broke training down into four different categories, marksmanship, which is, you know, hitting the bullseye. Um, and then a section I call the basics and not just the basics of, well, this is a trigger or whatever, but also, you know, basics like well, what kind of holster should I buy? You know, what kind of gun belt should I wear if I'm going to be wearing a six pound, you know, that, that kind of the basics of the, you know, the equipment and the basics of, of, of the, uh, just the lifestyle of, of carry. Um, third is the legalities, you know, where you can carry, when you can use lethal force. And then fourth is really more of an intermediate or advanced, and that's, uh, you know, movement. You know, how to move in a gunfight, how to do this, that, and the other thing. Uh, You know, pie in corners and that sort of thing. What do you think about that? Do you you think we have too much emphasis on, or I don't know, I don't want to say we have too much emphasis on marksmanship, but how do you think, is what's an effective way to broaden the type of uh, training that folks think about when they think about training? Well, uh, and you know what, those four, um, you know, basically the the marksmanship, basic, legalities, movement, that's great concept of breaking it down into categories. Um, I feel people definitely feel all I got to do is keep shooting and be a good shot, and I'm a good, responsible gun owner. And that's that's a little bit off, and and what you're saying is is 100% correct. the equipment is subjective, you know, not what holster works good for me might not be good for someone else, but you definitely got to always keep up on it and make sure it's still serviceable. Make sure that it retains the weapon. Yeah. That's for sure. Legalities. Again, it's perishable. What, you know, we teach innocence, imminence, proportionality, avoidance for self-defense and, you know, if you're not staying up on that, you're going to forget it. And you've got to have all four of those components to be able to claim self-defense. So 
So uh, you better stay up on the legalities. And especially here in California, they are trying to restrict where we can carry it. So those prohibited places and things like that, um, they could change. But luckily, they didn't even get the votes for uh, the state assembly bill too, but there's other things or 918 they didn't get, but now two they're trying to pass. So hopefully there'll be an injunction and I'm sure you guys will spearhead some knowledge on that one coming up. Um, Yeah, stay tuned everybody for that. (laughs) We're already working on it. Yeah, and then for movement, just because you can shoot doesn't mean, it's kind of like what's that old saying, be able to chew bubble gum and walk? Well, <laughs> it takes a lot to be able to be safe while you're moving. And, um, you know, we, we provide classes like that. Luckily, we have our own range, so we get to actually start moving down range, taking cover. Um, but one of the things I think everybody should work on more also is awareness. You know, I got Colonel Cooper's color codes of awareness. We we got to be aware of our surroundings at all times when we're carrying our guns. And uh, I just can't stress that enough because if you're aware of your surroundings, most of the time you can avoid a pretty bad situation because you are aware. That's a really good, you know, maybe I should add a fifth, like uh, awareness and de-escalation or something like that. Because that, that is an excellent point. Um, and I, it doesn't yeah. quite fit in in my four categories. and. I, it's it's so crucial. I, you know, the only gunfight you win is the one that you avoid getting in, right? Is that the saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you cannot be criminally arrested, and you, you can't <laughs> cannot be civilly sued. Uh, one of the funny things is I always tell my, my class, hey, guys, I, I hate to break some bad news to you. When you get your CCW, you don't get a badge, and you don't get a cape. You're not a cop, and you're not a superhero. You're going to use that CCW to protect yourself and your immediate family. The liabilities of you going out and trying to be a superhero is just far too great for any person to do. You know who you know who does a really good job, who really clarified that well? I heard him uh, talk about that, and, and he put it in such clear terms, um, which is unusual for an attorney to do, uh, is uh, <laughs> S- Stephen Artemis uh, was, was yeah. given a – Steve and Sandy have been my friends for a long time, and he does a good job. He does. He, he sa- I heard him say that all a CCW does is exempt you from transportation law, firearms transportation laws in California. It doesn't change lethal force or any any of that other stuff. All it does is say, hey, that gun that you normally would would transport, uh, you know, unloaded and locked, you don't have to transport it unloaded and locked anymore. That's all it does. And I thought, man, that is crystal clear. You know, yeah. and it's and he so does a good job. it's so simple. He does do a good. He's a good dude. Both of them are fantastic. So, what do you think about SB two? The the you know well, make, making everything a, a sensitive area. My 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 opinion. I'm a strong supporter of shall not be infringed upon. So um, the whole idea is that you can bear this art weapon to protect yourself and uh, defend yourself and. They're, they're just trying to – any narrative that a firearm is used in a good manner, they're trying to take that away because it truly is an equalizer. The 70-year-old person is just as strong now as that 20-year-old trying to rob them and beat them, you know. And it's, it's ridiculous that they, they're trying to make it where you can't carry it anywhere. If there's a liquor store in the plaza, you can't have a gun anywhere in the parking lot or, you know, everywhere that you need the gun, they're, they're saying you can't have it there. And wow, it's just unbelievable. Hey, do you have time? For, can, you, can, you, can you do one more segment? Absolutely. Okay, hang out then. Uh, he wants to go shoot in the range. <laughs> Too bad. You have to stay here with us. Have you ever wanted to get a pilot's license? Yes. Well, here in San Diego, pilots can fly almost every day, which makes San Diego one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. Learn to fly with San Diego Flight Training International. Check out the deals just for gun owner radio listeners. For one hour of ground school, you get one hour of flight with an instructor. Yes, you get to fly. Normally, that's $400. But for radio listeners, it's $350. You can get started real easy. Just call them at 858-569-1822. Learn to fly with SDFTI, 858-569-1822.
So we're talking to Mike Duda from Elite CCW up in uh, in Orange County. So we were talking about SB2. SB2, for those who haven't heard, is a is a proposal in Sacramento that will essentially make everything outside of your home a sensitive area. So even somebody with a CCW won't be able to carry there. So right now you have some sensitive areas like schools and you know courtrooms and airports, the secure part of the airport, and you can't carry there no matter what. They're, what they're trying to do is uh, what the result of, of SB2 will be is to make grocery stores and movie theaters and doctor's offices and malls and parking lots and, you know, McDonald's and fast food and retail. Every place you can think of will be a sensitive area so CCW holders won't be able to carry and defend themselves outside of the home. Mike, do you, Mike, do you think – I mean, do you think the world is a better place – with with more CCW holders, oh, I absolutely do. Um, you you got to remember, it, it's people uh, years and years ago when when they were, uh, it, it was crime wasn't every every corner. Okay, uh, people had CCWs, and never in history have CCW holders been the problem. Yeah. So us having more of them. People are going to think twice when the news says, hey, the guy with the knife trying to rob somebody, the threat is stopped. You know, we never shoot to kill. We only shoot to stop the threat. And when the threat stopped, hey, that gun worked. And they're going to start thinking twice, especially look in Orange County. We're going to probably be cresting 20,000 here really quick. And, and compared to 3.1 million citizens, it's still a needle in a haystack, right. but People are going to start thinking, holy cow, is that going to be an armed person? Or when I go into that store to rob, is there going to be an armed person? Statistics show the states with constitutional carry, crime is lower than states like ours that are very restricted. So I I think uh, definitely we will become more and more safe as more permits are issued. Well, I think, you know... uh... The COVID and then shortly after COVID started, the BLM riots, it kind of cut through the political rhetoric. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, you had all this, the, the political rhetoric, like, well, you know, gee, it, you know, all this, these myths and, you know, crap that they talk about with guns, like, well, gee, if you have a gun, uh, you're more likely to shoot somebody you know or whatever. All these ridiculous myths that, that, that they would, you know, uh, soil the, the world with. When when things got dangerous and scary, everyone, I don't care who you were, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, commie, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what your party, when things got scary, people went, I need a gun. I need a gun. It cut through all the political rhetoric and people knew, um, you know, logically, instinctively, they knew, hey, you know what? If I'm in danger, I want the most effective self-defense tool ever created by man and that is a firearm, and boom, the gun shops were flooded. That's why you you know you saw all the new folks saying, "All right, I got this gun. Now I need some training." Um, which, by the way, I think training in general has gotten far more popular uh, in the last uh, five years than it probably ever has been. And I think that's an enormously good thing. I mean, I, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago, I, I, honestly, twenty years ago, you couldn't give away a one day class, you know, to here, here's a class on firearms, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now, I mean, geez, everybody's taking training and I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with, 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 uh, the general population. Like I said, seeing right through that political BS and going, Hey, you know what? I want to be safe. I wanted to protect myself. The best way to do that is to be armed. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Do you think that law enforcement now are you the norm in law enforcement? Do you think deputies and and cops and law enforcement and you know uh, do you think that they generally um, are in favor of a lot more CCWs or fifty fifty or how, how do you think what do you think the breakdown is? Oh, I think it's it's definitely the preponderance is more are in favor because number one, cops know these guys are criminally vetted. And they got to go through a background check that's almost as bad as the cop getting hired. Even some of the, like Long Beach requires the same psychological test 
that a cop has to pass. Right. So, that Minnesota um, personality test or whatever. Is that what you're talking about? That MMPPMPM uh, or whatever? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't remember what so it is. So they got to pass everything like that. But most cops know. And then, hey, staffing isn't in abundance. So that cop probably realizes when they're in trouble on the side of the road, getting their butt handed to them, who's, gonna, who's the one that's likely going to stop? A CCW holder. Right. You know, Arizona, there was the cop out on the highway right. in a fight for his life. Who, who stopped the threat in that situation? A CCW holder. It really does bother me. I, I got to tell you, some of the best people in, 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 in your neighborhood are going to be gun owners. And I don't know. I, I, maybe it's a coincidence. And maybe I'm totally biased. And, or maybe both. I don't know. But, I mean, we really truly seem to be the pillars of society. Um, I've met just some of the very best people I've ever met. Um, you know, doing Second Amendment activism, and I, I just think it's great. I, I'm so, it's so wonderful, and I, this bias that you know the media portrays, um, it's it's got to go. It's it just has to end. I mean, we're, we're some of the best folks uh, in, in the world. You know, we're we're, we're some of the uh, you know we're, the, we're like I said, we're the pillars of society. What would you like to see if you could if you could wave your magic wand and get rid of uh, you know one gun law or, or change one thing about guns in California? Uh, what would it be? What do you think the biggest problem is right now? Misinformation. <laughs> yeah. What's Save that one? What's what's like the number? What's some? What? Give me some examples. What's what's your your biggest pet peeve when, when it comes to misinformation? Well, if, look at the assault weapons ban. Okay, the government put up a a, a report that said that a two two three at fifteen yards would blow somebody's head off their shoulder. <laughs> if they're shot in the arm, it would. De- you know, uh, dismember them. If they're shot in the torso, it would put a five-inch hole in them. A two-two-three, as you know and I know, is less than a quarter of an inch in diameter. It will never do that. But to the person who doesn't know anything, oh, the government's saying it, Bonta, right, for the, the lawsuit on it, right. and they're, they're giving this misinformation. I think whoever wrote the report was watching the Call of Duty video game, <laughs> and in that it takes somebody's head off. But somebody who, who doesn't know anything about guns would say, oh, that's got to be true. They said it. And unfortunately, our media does not tell all the good that guns do. But they are so quick when, when a person who has a mental health issue uses a gun uh, badly. Unfortunately, that's publicized big time. But all the times that the guns are used in a good manner and, and save somebody, that's not you know, they don't put it out there. So being, so, a, being a law enforcement, being a law enforcement professional, what do you think? How do what's what would mean? You know, I can't solve the entire world's problems on the phone here today. But if there was one thing you could do to improve, um, you know, mental health, you know, what, what do you think needs to happen? Like, how do we? Uh, what needs to happen so that people who are going through a mental health crisis, you know, don't do something horrendous? Well. Uh, my my knowledge of it, I think it actually started back with, unfortunately, Ronald Reagan. He stopped the funding for a lot of state mental or the the funding for uh, institutions. So, you know, we people that need help. And, and the problem, though, is when you give them help, they'll start stabilizing. And then, hey, I don't need my medication no more. They leave a facility and now they're going back down we got to figure out a way of getting those who want help, help. But there's a difference of someone with a mental health issue and someone who just has an ideology of wanting to live on the street and do drugs and have everyone else do stuff for them and they can live wherever they want. That That's a problem. And, you know, mental health, is it's there, but we can't make it the excuse that everybody suffers from mental health because it's not true. And I can tell you in, in law enforcement, we offered help to people. Hey, I can get you in a place, get you off the street. No, I don't want to go. Oh. And, and that's where the um, advocates for the homeless will differ. I'm telling you, my experience has been when I offer help to people, they don't want to take it. Mm-hmm. And then how do I, I can't force them to, hey, let's get you off the street, get you a meal, get you some medical attention if you need it talk with a counselor, uh, and get you the help. Nope, I don't want to go. 
we can't force them. They're was, not greatly disabled. I, I can't. I can't imagine uh, being a law enforcement officer these days in California with the enormous mental health issues we're having in the public, with the uh, you know the drug issues that lead to the mental health issues. I, I can't imagine what it. I don't know how. I don't know what. The, I don't. I seriously don't know what the answer is. I got to tell you, I know the answer to just about everything. <laughs> I'm enormously uh, brilliant. Uh, yes, just yeah. ask me, I'll tell you. But I, that's what I'm, I'm stumped. But hey, Mike, if people want to train with you and learn from you and support you and get to know you and buy you a beer and come hang out with you, how do they find you? Uh, EliteCCW.com. We're in Fountain Valley. We're, uh, we're on Instagram, EliteCCW Training. Go ahead and spell that. It's it, it, Elite. E L I T E dot C C W. All right. You want him, you want him, you want him to spell C C W, Dave? Uh, no, I think I wrote that down. <laughs> but I got to figure it out. I think that she, what we should do is anytime media lies about gun laws, yeah. their head explodes. <laughs> it only has well, to every, happen once. Every time they lie, my head explodes. I know, so but if theirs time, did, yeah. guess what? They wouldn't do it again. Mike, thank you so much, man. Absolutely. Appreciate yeah. you so much. It was, it was really great talking to you, and I'll, I'll talk to you very soon, okay? Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, hey, thank you guys at, at Gun Owners Radio. We we truly appreciate the support that you guys give the Second Amendment community, and your efforts are greatly appreciated, guys. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Thanks man. We work hard. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self-defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time. Or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 961, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.